Now, before we dive in, if you find my videos useful, make sure to click that subscribe button and also make sure to click that bell icon on the side to get notified every time I upload a new video. And of course, if you do use Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, make sure to follow me on all at Saki Tech Online, also for the latest updates. All right, let's dive in. Hey guys, Soccer from Saki Tech, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you guys all the new and exciting features of Android 11. So let's dive in and get started. Now, the first thing I'm gonna show you guys is I'm gonna go to my settings, all right? I'm gonna scroll all the way down, go into my About Phone, and as you can see, we are indeed running Android version 11. Now let's dive in and take a look at all the new features to expect with the deployment of 11 very soon. Now the very first thing I wanna talk about has to do with the fixed row at the bottom here. Now, normally what you do is you just grab apps and you just drag them over and put them where, the, where you want them to. But with Android 11, you can actually tell Android to turn this into a suggested apps row. So if I press and hold on the home screen and if I go to home settings, uh, right over here it says app suggestions. So the bottom row of apps on the home screen is now suggestible applications. So this is going to be dynamic. It's going to change based on uh, what app you use most of the time during the day. Now again if I press and hold this and if I tap on home settings, uh, I can disable that. When I disable this, you'll notice that most of the apps disappeared except the one that I actually uh, dragged and dropped. So if I do drag and drop an application, it is gonna get pinned. But if I go back in, and if I enable the uh, suggestions, now when I go back, the remainder is gonna be filled with suggested apps that are dynamically chosen. And I can always press and hold on a given application, right? And I can tap on pin, and that's gonna be a permanent app for this uh, bottom row. And you'll notice that there's a circular highlight around the applications that are suggested, but there's no circular highlight around the apps that I dragged and dropped myself. So that's how you can differentiate between the things that you pinned yourself and the things that are being, and the things, the apps that are being suggested by the system. Fantastic. One more highly requested feature that we have now when I pull down the uh, control panel, if I swipe over, I have a brand new option known as a screen record option. Now when I click on this, uh, it's gonna ask me, do you wanna start recording? I'm gonna say yes. Uh, you can choose to record the audio and also show touches on the screen as you're recording. So if I enable this and if I tap start, uh, and as I tap the screen, it's gonna show the touches that I perform on certain areas on the screen. Now on the top, you see a red button. That means it's being recorded right now. When I pull this down, what I can do is I can tap this to stop recording, which is fantastic, easy to use, nice and cool. You tap it, and then the image, uh, the video file, the screen recording video file gets saved into your photos. Now when you pull the notifications panel down, you'll notice on the top, uh, you get a battery indi indicator but right next to the actual indicator, it says one day and one hour left for the battery to die based on your existing usage. So that's a nice little thing. It doesn't say 80%, 70%. It tells you, it kind of predicts when your battery will die, how long it's going to uh, actually last. This is much more specific in that it tells you exactly how much is left. All right, so when you go into your multitasking pane right over here, what you're gonna see is at the bottom, you're gonna see three brand new buttons, screenshot, select, and share. Now, when you tap on the screenshot, what it's gonna do is it's gonna take a screenshot of the application that you're focused on at the given moment. So if I tap on this one, it's gonna save a screenshot. It's gonna look just like this at the bottom. From here, you can tap and you can edit that screenshot. And then again, if I pull this again, I can also tap on select, and that gives me the option uh, to be able to select text again on the application I'm focused on. So if I were to tap over here, I can now select the text right there because I pressed the select button. And then finally, I can tap on share and that allows me to share the screenshot of the app that I was focused on for that particular page that I'm inside, in this case, which is this area, all right? Now, one more new thing we have is when I press and hold the power uh, menu, what I get is I get a brand new menu on the top. I have the emergency option, I have the power off, the restart option, 
Over here, I can add a payment method for Google Pay. And over here, I have the ability to control the lights in my home, as long as you have these added to your phone via Google Home. Now, you can also tap on this over here. You can add more controls to control your home if you're into smart home, or uh, let me just press and hold again, or you can tap this again, and you can tap on Edit Controls, and you can modify the controls that you want or don't want. So that's a brand new option as well. All right, the next thing I'm gonna talk about has to do with your notifications. So when you pull these down, uh, first and foremost, you have, a, you have a compartmentalized look to it. So your notifications that you get an alert for show up here. If you have any silent notifications, they show up here. And if you have any conversations via messages, messenger or whatever, they're gonna show up in their own little section uh, that is gonna be titled as conversations. So that's gonna be a, a nice way to be able to separate all these crazy notifications from each other. Now, one more thing you're seeing on the top over here is a music controller that has been moved into the control panel. And when I pull this down, it expands even further. You get an even controller area and you can tap on this one to switch which Bluetooth speaker in your house or wherever you're connected to, you wanna to switch to to play your music off of. So I can tap down for that. Now this is a hidden feature that needs to be enabled. I'm gonna talk about that more in a second. Let me quickly finish about the notifications. So with notifications, you can also press and hold on any notification and it's gonna give you a quick way to make that notification silent if you so desire. If you're getting continuous notifications from certain applications and you're just sick and tired, you can do this immediately. So let me click on done over here. We're gonna keep it as it is. Now with the notifications, if you go into your settings, let's go to the settings real quick. And if I go into my apps and notifications, and if I tap on the notifications right over here, I have some new options. If I have accidentally swiped away a notification, I can come back here, go into my notification history and see all the recently dismissed notifications just in case I miss something. So that's also a brand new option under notifications. And we also have the bubbles option. So if I tap on this one, what's gonna happen is uh, when I'm dealing with text messages, you'll get bubbles that looks just like the Facebook Messenger conversation bubbles. So if somebody sends me a text message, it's gonna pop on the top here as a bubble. I can tap it to expand it and I can keep them organized on the side under these uh, bubbles section. As you can see, again, you can disable or enable that based on your needs. And of course, when I go into my settings over here, uh, as you can see, we have a slightly different look for certain options that populate on the top, as you can see. And of course, with the screenshot, I did forget to mention, when you take a screenshot, uh, now you have this brand new look. You can X out of it, or if you tap it again, uh, you can share or edit it. And when you do edit it, uh, it's a brand new look. This is not what you see before. Uh, this is a brand new look. So I'm gonna pull down my notifications panel and boom, right on the top, you are gonna be see an actual music controller right inside the quick toggles panel. And if I swipe it down to fully expose the actual toggles, you'll see the actual controller on the top as well. Also notice as I switch between different tracks, the background color changes based on the track uh, that's playing in the background. Now this feature as of now is hidden under developer options. And of course, without this feature being enabled, you don't get any of that. This is what you get. You just get the regular, usual quick toggles area, even if I pull it down, all right? So let me show you where to go and enable it. So let's go to my settings, all right? Now, if you wanna enable your developer options that sits under the system settings, first you have to go to about phone, then you have to go all the way down and you have to tap the bill number seven times. In my case, I don't have to because I already have it enabled. So when I go back out here and go to system, uh, advanced at the bottom, I have the developer option settings. If I tap on this guy, and if I scroll down till I find the media uh, section, which should be right here somewhere, the media section, you wanna enable the media resumption feature. If you don't have this feature enabled, uh, it's not gonna show up. If you enable this feature, that thing is gonna show up on the top, which is fantastic. I'm really looking forward to this being implemented in all the other phones, uh, such as the Samsung smartphones. So basically, if you go up here, you pull this down, 
you can control your music from here, play, pause, next track, previous track, and as I change the tracks, uh, the album art determines the background color of that actual area, so which is also very good. So if I pull this down, again, if I go back, I mean, to the next track, take a look at how the colors just change as I switch from one track to the other. All right, so if you found this video useful, make sure to subscribe to Saki Tech by clicking that button and also click that bell icon on the side to make sure you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you do use Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, you can follow me at Saki Tech online to get the latest updates as well. All right, have a fantastic day.